Hope you're enjoying the Sunday footy show. Kangaroos were magnificent yesterday. They defeated a, a, deplete, a depleted Giants team. Luke Ball, who they did had plenty out, but they were still sensational. There was, and there wasn't that many out of Great Western Sydney either, but they did, did what they depleted. had to do, the, uh, the Kangaroos and Robbie Nars. With it was amongst the goals, McMillan and Wade three each. Nicky Del Sano, first game for 10 weeks, didn't miss a beat. Jamie McMillan played probably the best game that he's played, and, and Boomer Harvey, Reese Palmer got three for the losing team. But the bloke who broke the world record, which world. has only stood for three weeks now, joins us this morning. So we are in the presence of greatness, really. Yeah. Yeah. World record. <laughs> yeah. Todd Golson, thanks for joining us. And we'll, we'll address the, the shiner that you're pretty happy with this morning, too. You said it looks pretty tough. <laughs> How did, uh, how did you cop that one? Yeah, I wish it was, I wish it was an exciting story, but just uh, Big Lob got me with a hand to the face and then um, Sean Higgins with his, with his big head bumped into <laughs> me and, and split me open. Let's have a look at it here. So there wasn't really much in it. Oh, it was surely pathetic. not that. Yeah, it's pathetic. Surely not that. Was that. It was absolutely pathetic. It was for hitting. Yeah. And then you got to open up again. Oh, that's better. That's, that's better. that's a better. big pill. Because that's a big head, isn't it? <laughs> He's a massive head. He's a massive head. <laughs> it was one of those days, those Bill, because it happened in the pregame as well. No, yeah, what happened there with Drew? Yeah, yeah, I think Drew and I think you can see here. I think Drew and Scooter were just trying to tackle Boomer. This was before and the game. That was before. before the game. I think it was, yeah, it was about two minutes before the game, so Drew had to run off oh. before the centre bounce and get fixed up by the dock, and then he had to start on the bench. And you guys kicked five goals in ten minutes, so you're on before the game, weren't you? Yeah, already, obviously ready to go. The boys are cracking in hard, but you know, I think we, our start's been pretty poor. Last few weeks, so it was nice to. Croc would have been happy. Croc's, Croc's always happy though. Now, now, he's, now, now he's got the head job for the moment. He's always happy. <laughs> Todd, <you're... laughs> Todd Mummy out uh, during the week. I want to ask you: Do you do you sort of lick your lips a little bit going, oh, no. into, going into the game, or, or do you, does it make you sort of do a bit more work coming up against the Ruck? No, you probably don't know a heap about. The game, the game doesn't. The game doesn't. Um, <laughs> Doesn't change too much. Up, yeah, on, get, get, on, get, it, get it together, boys. Um, no, nah, it doesn't change too much. Whoever you know, it's obviously the task is very different compared to coming up against Mummy. But you know, we still have to go through the same process. It would just be harder to, to find a bit of vision on the on Lob and, and on Stewart. But you know, we still we went through the same process. And you smashed him in the centre bounce. I think it was 20 to three. When you're out there, do you have do you, do you feel like you're on top? And, and when you come together as a group after every goal. Does it give you more flexibility to try a few different things when you're on yeah, top like that? Yeah, it definitely helps. I think the last two weeks we've been really good in the centre bounces, which is very pleasing, I think. Yeah, so it gives you a little bit of confidence. I think you know, getting the ball going your way to start off with is gets in your forward half, gets you put that pressure on them, and you know, that's what we felt like we were doing, and you know, it was a, a big advantage for us. Who's the best ruckman you come up against? Who do you respect the most? Oh, oh now or, yeah. or, or over the time? Yeah. Oh, I mean, Sandy has to be. Yeah. I mean, just... The sheer body of work the bloke's done over the last 10 years is, is unbelievable. And some of his size and how well he moves, he's still, you know, the, him, and, him and obviously Coxie when he was around are two of the guys that really um, have, have stepped them after everyone else to, to try and ma match. Uh, when's uh, Brad Scott expected that and how different has it been playing under Darren Crocker? Yeah, um, I think he's expected to get around the club starting from the next, next couple of weeks. Um, I think he's been... He can't sit down still for too long, so he'll be coming in for maybe a couple of hours at a time. But yeah, I think Croc's been really good, obviously um, taking over the job. But you know, it's been the whole group that stepped up. You know, the leadership group, all the assistant coaches, all the players. We've all sort of taken on the responsibility, and you know, it's been a team effort to, to get us where we are now. Jamie McMillan's had so many injuries over the last couple of years. He's a great story. Played some really good footy. Culminated in probably the best on ground last night. Twenty nine disposals, three goals. He really started the game well. Yeah, you know, very happy that. That J Mac was able to, to have that, that sort of game. You know, he's got a lot of respect amongst the boys, and that's shown by him being in the leadership group. So, you know, he's always been a someone that stood up and, and voiced their opinion and, and set the direction the club's going in. So, it was, yeah, we're all very happy that he, he was able to put a good game together for himself. You're 6 and 6, Goldie, going into the five. Probably not where you would have liked to have been coming off a, a prelim final last year, but. You've got a reasonable run coming up. I'm sure you're not looking too far ahead. Firstly, what do you get up to over the next couple of weeks? And secondly, have your expectations changed or, or are you still setting your sights on, on going deep into, into September? Oh, obviously, we've still got to set, set those sights on, on going deep into September. That's what we're here for. Um, obviously, we would have liked a bit more consistent performance through the first half of the year. And you know, six and six obviously just shows that, that inconsistency we've had. We just need to start putting some four-quarter performances together. And I think if once we do that, um, things will start to open up, but you know, we can't be happy with the way things are, are going. We've got to work pretty hard over the next two weeks to, to fix that. And spend some time with little Lockie, I think it is, the yep. new, new one uh, in the family? Yes, definitely. Yeah, he's definitely keeping us on our toes, so I think yeah, three kids is definitely a, an eye-opener, but yeah. you know, getting through it, he's, he's been pretty good so far.
Uh, Damien Barrett wrote during the week on AFL.com that there was, he doubted whether, or he questioned whether Daniel Wells would play again for the Kangaroos. Are you worried about his future, Daniel? Uh, it's not something that we've spoken about that we've really thought about. You know, we know Wells is doing everything he can to, to get right to, to come back this season. We're very hopeful, hopeful that he'll be back you know, in, in the next month or two. Um, but it's one of those things that, you know, while there's, while there's a bit of information around especially areas like the Achilles and things like that, it's, you know, it's not something you want to push because if he, if he does rupture it or something like that, it's, that's worst case scenario. So it's got to be take time, but we know when he, when he does come back, he'll be fit and firing and, and give us his 100% effort. There's a suggestion out there, though, that he doesn't like playing unless he's 100% fit. Is that unfair on Daniel Wells? Um, oh, I, I don't know if it has to be 100%. I think, I think everyone likes to be as close to 100% as they can be. And, you know, someone like him with his, with his explosive pace and, he, and his you know, way of age players, obviously he needs to be close to him. I think he's played injured in the past and, and wasn't wrapped with how he went. So, you know, it's one of those things you've got to back him he'll, when he's playing that he's going to give us 100%. And... Now, if he doesn't feel like he's quite there and can't play his role, then you know, we, we'll back him in to, to rest up. You're another with a different sporting background, a basketball background. Do you still follow it a little bit? And now with the Australians going well over there, do you sort of wonder what might have happened in a different... No, I definitely don't wonder what might have happened. I know I have no chance of, of making it over there. I think I would have been Talk there if, up, I, mate, if, I, if, I thought, if I thought I could. But no, I, yeah, I follow it you know, as, much as, as much as anyone at the club does. We... I think, especially when the finals are on, we all we all got got on every single TV. But you know, it's, it's good to see you know players like Paddy Mills and and Matty, Matt Delavid over doing well. Can we go to the votes now, Goldie? Do we? Do you have a question, Bill? No. Can we go to the votes? We'll go to the votes, and uh, absolutely, we'd you have a world record hit out. She very much he? in the votes. Good I had him on top of McMillan, but anyway, yeah. that's okay. They both get the eight there. Jamie McMillan was terrific. Nick Del what, Santo. What were the two that he could have done better? Oh, I think, I think, Todd, you've probably played better games, it'd be fair to say, in terms of around the ground. I think it was a, your most dominant performance at the clearance. He's had 80 hit outs. Only six kicks, six handballs. It's all about right. hit outs, is it? Could have done a bit more around the ground. Todd, you would have said. You'd say that. No, I, de I definitely agree. Yeah. I yeah, would like to have a bit more impact yeah. around the so ground. I'll give him 10 next time. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Something well, to work on. Surely he's in the Virgin Australia All-Australian team. Got him. Matthew Lloyd does this every week, live and active, powered by Velocity Frequent Fire. Matthew Lloyd. Is Goldstein still on your side? Uh, Hutchie, yeah, he was on the bench last week. This is last week's side. Uh, obviously, Toddy's down there on the interchange bench. Sandy Land's the ruckman he spoke of there. These are the changes. Rance is out. Betts, Jeremy Cameron, Aaron Sandy Lands. These are the changes for this week. I put Jeremy McGovern in. Mm. Uh, I think his intercept mark's been fantastic this year. I think Chad Wingard, in a disappointing year, he's replaced Eddie Betts. Luke Park has come in. Jeremy Cameron has uh, obviously had a disappointing Murphy? couple of weeks. <laughs> and Nick Natanui has come in. Uh, Todd Goldstein's gone to the ruck. Nick Natanui has Eddie come into the bench. Is he? uh, he's had a bad fortnight. He has had a good year, but I think Chad Wingard has had maybe one, four or five. He, so one, he's 33 goals for a small forward and you've got him out of the side. Because there's more about goals. Chad Wingard's ab up in every rolling statistic this year. It's a rolling. That's rolling. right. You've got, week week. You got one docker, Lordo. <laughs> yeah, one docker. one game. Well, you yeah, name the other docker that should be in. One docker. Name the other docker that should be in. Well, Monday should be in the side. No, Locking I think Neil, Andrew Gaff has gone past him. Scotty Penelbury's gone past Murphy? him. Murphy? Where's Robert Murphy? Robert Murphy went out for Dane Rampy. I don't think you underestimate what they do up in Sydney. Just get your bulldog hat What do you think, Goldie? No, oh, I'm, I'm going to stay out of this conversation, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Any other? What about Sean Higgins? He was the other one that I thought to myself with small forwards. Is he? Mm. Would he be in the top, say, three or four in your best and fairest civils to be stopped now? You think? Oh, 100 percent. He'd yeah. have to be. I think the way he's come into the footy club, the the preseason he had was was probably the, the best out of anyone, um, and the form he's shown so far. I think in a few of the games where we haven't had too much contributors, he's probably been one of our main shining lights. Let, let us know your thoughts. Get stuck into Lordo on Twitter. Uh, hashtag All Australian, of course. Uh, check out the Velocity Rewards store too. But uh, Lordo, hashtag All Australian or at Matthew Lloyd18 to let him know your thoughts. Thanks for coming in.